Call all hands. Beat to quarters. Run out the guns. Stand by this covered battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Blint stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. success was strange and new on that eventful voyage of my younger days. Yet it was unmistakably in the air for all of us, officers and men alike. The new year of 1802 dawned with a brighter promise, even there in the West Indies, far from home. We'd taken two Spanish fortresses, destroyed a nest of privateers, and gained security for future convoys making use of the Mona Passage. No wonder my new friend, Bush, now second in command of the renowned, stood grinning to himself there on the quarterdeck as he applied his eye to the ship's telescope. Morning, Mr. Bush. And a happy New Year. Surely I'm right. This is New Year's Day, despite the temperature. Oh, no. Happy New Year to you, too. I hope we both deserve it. You look happy enough. What are you trained on? Here. Want to see? Uh, the second fort there at the harbour mouth. Our, our party's leaving there. Boat's putting off from the landing right now. Mm, yes. There'll be some fireworks any moment, then. Oh, not till they've got a little farther off. Tell me, um, does Captain Buckland seem at all um, elated to you, Bush? Not particularly. No, not well, to me. It's strange, isn't it? Three prize ships lying off our stern that go with us to Jamaica. Five hundred pounds prize money for our good captain. Heaven only knows the hands are pleased enough with the five shillings they'll collect. <laughs> Perhaps she's only thinking of the fourth privateer we had to sink. I don't suppose I'll ever understand that, ma'am. Two Spanish fortresses taken, one of them already destroyed, and... The second of them gone. Our boat party's safely away. Huh. No more do Spanish guns rule the entrance to Samana Bay, you'll notice. Mountains of smoke and flying masonry. I haven't. Two tons of gunpowder were quite sufficient, weren't they? He should be losing sail now, isn't he? As soon as his nib sends up word from his cabin. Huh? Well, with four ships, three prizes, and we ourselves, jammed full of prisoners and their women, at least our voyage to Jamaica won't be boring. Mm. It's the women must be watched, I'd say. Coming aboard, I, I thought the men seemed tractable enough, even resigned. Oh, probably had enough of that weird island. Yes. Tropic heat, rebellious natives, yellow fever... Well, some of them have been stationed there in garrison for years. Yes, but they're sullen wives and daughters. If baleful looks could kill, they'd have withered every man of us. <laughs> they don't mind showing they can hate, do they? Oh, well, separating them the way we have ought to take care of that. Only about 50 women and their children battened down in our midshipman's berth. And marine sentries always on guard, remember? Bayonets fixed and muskets loaded. Yeah. And all 400 of their men stowed on our lower gun deck. Every hatchway guarded by six mm -hmm. prisoners aboard each of the three prizes, too, remember? Yes, but not as many. And we've got good men of our own aboard those prizes. Look, 
There goes Elfins now in Captain Buckland's gig. He's boarding the one they call La Gaditana. Mm, yes. <laughs> you sound as if I still haven't convinced you. Well, I'll be convinced once we're safely in Kingston Harbor. And that's a full week away. We'll have to let them up, you know, for exercise and air. Conditions down there are no better than doing a slave ship. Oh, I'll grant you that. L- look here, Hornblower. Try being a bit more cheerful, will you? You're, th- you're going to give me nightmares. Oh. Well, well, he, he isn't sending word this time. Our captain comes himself. Lieutenant Bush. Uh, captain, <clears throat> it, uh, it looks as if the, the damage ashore is complete enough, doesn't it, sir? Yes. We'll get underway just as soon as the shore boats hoist it in, if you please. Aye, aye, sir. All hands stand by to get underway. All hands stand by to get underway. Aye, aye, sir. And all that shore boat line in our men, do you hear? was entitled to feel satisfied, I suppose, as one day followed another without event. There we were, a small armada, one British ship shepherding three Spanish prizes, four specks alone and tiny in a vast, sun-drenched sea. On the renown, we were left short-handed, both as to officers and men. But though each of the prize crews was small enough in all conscience, this fact produced no crisis. Watch succeeded watch, and all was calm. A tight and proper routine seemed to have been established. Yet I still couldn't avoid a slight uneasiness. Exercise period beginning? Yes, the regular hour after all. Mm, no doubt. Bush, look, am I seeing things again or am I right? That woman over there by the hatchway beside the sentry. She doesn't look exactly sullen now. No, she's... By George, she's flirting with one of our Marines. Sergeant Billings, come here, please. Sit down, gentlemen. Sit down. Uh, thank you for coming. Oh, shut the door, please, Lieutenant Bush. Uh, certainly, Captain. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, we should reach Kingston. I haven't tightened up too much on sailing orders during the voyage, so long as we could keep the three prize ships under surveillance. But now that we'll be entering a British harbor, some changes are called for, I think. Oh, changes, sir? Yes, Mr. Bush. Can't have those Spanish vessels straggling along in any fashion. Simply won't do. Must keep at least a trim formation. Understood, gentlemen? Uh, yes, sir, of course. Um, but may I respectfully suggest, sir, that in this instance, um, well, appearances aren't really as important no, as... No, Mr. Hornblower, you may not. And listen, if you please, to my instructions. Yes, sir. Mitchman Brown will replace Mr. Hornblower temporarily as second lieutenant of the renown under Lieutenant Bush. Mr. Hornblower... This afternoon, well before nightfall, you will transfer to the first of the privateers, La Gaditana. Yes, sir. From there, in consultation with the other prize crews, you will please organize a more efficient disposition. Bring all three into port in an orderly manner. Uh, s- sir, um, may I be permitted to point out that, well, we're already shorthanded aboard Renown. I don't know why it is that certain officers feel called upon to offer me advice when I don't ask it. Very well, gentlemen. That will be all, I think, for the moment. That statement I almost believed myself. Once aboard Gaditana, I set about hoisting signals to our other two prize crews, pursuing Buckland's instructions as best I could. As Bush told me his story later, I was able to piece together pretty clearly much of what had happened aboard the Renown in my absence. It was a dark and lovely Caribbean night under bright stars when Bush completed his last evening rounds. He was dog-tired and soon asleep. All well! The usual 
ship's sounds did not disturb him in the least. But sometime after midnight, Bush became suddenly awake. His ears told him that something was amiss. There were loud cries. There was a rush of feet on deck. A woman screamed. Then there was another rush of feet, and Bush had leapt from his cot, snatched his sword and pistols from their beckets against the cabin bulkhead. him in an instant. Hands grabbed his sword blade. He fought to tear it from their grip. Struck wildly at a pressing mob. He kicked out of his bare feet at the attackers. Red arms! Red arms! This way! This way! Come on! We'll make a stand! I'm on with you, sir! It all happened so fast, none of us knew enough to rally! Red arms! This way! We can stop them! Over here! Come on! Come on! It don't look much good, sir, does it? Here comes some more of our crew, though. You will try it. Tear together, men. Together. We'll be cut to pieces if we don't. Bush struggled to rally them. A few more of the crew of the renown fought to his side. And suddenly he found himself sprawled on the deck. He had been struck down. He was bathed in blood. His own and that of others. His head swam. He was weak beyond belief. And then the tumult seemed to die away. Mr. Bush, sir. Mr. Bush. They've come from that there Spanish prize. Who's come? I, I do believe it's Mr. Hornblower, sir, with his prize crew. Now, this way. All your allowance can still walk. This way now, we can drive them back. This is Mr. Bush, sir. What? Here he is. Now, you might never know him at the moment. All that blood. And his fear trampled, too. Yes. Bush. Bush. Are you conscious? Oh, oh. Bush, Bush, speak to me. Bush. Hornblower. Did they... Did they take the ship? No, they did not, I'm glad to say. Thank God that you and a few others held them off till we got there. Ah, they never reached the quarterdeck. Where... Where's Captain Buckland? <clears throat> well, they took him prisoner while he still lay abed. Oh, he's all right. We released him as soon as we got the Spaniards under control and he... Bush. Bush. Here, man, he's unconscious again now. Lift him gently now. Yes, gently. We'll have him in his cabin in no time. Oh, hello, Bush. Uh, Bought you some fresh fruit juice. Oh. Thirsty? Lemonade. That's very thoughtful of you, Hornblower. You'll know there's, there's a very great deal I, I'd like to say to you in... Ingratitude. Hmm. Lemonade? What's lemonade? Bumboat from shore has already been alongside. Bought some lemons for you, that was all. I, I didn't mean lemonade, you know. Last night I... Though this, this is no time for you to talk. How are you feeling, anyhow? Movement not very easy, eh? No, I should think not. Clive tells me you had to close a lot of gashes in your body. Oh, 53 stitches, Hornblower. 53? I, I'm setting up like a crazy quilt. Oh, That'll mean some mending up in base hospital ashore. Not bad. I hear they feed you quite well up there. Um, I rather envy you at the moment. Things are going to be slightly difficult aboard. Was I dreaming last night, or did you tell me that they'd taken Captain Buckland in his bed? Oh, it's true enough. They bound him with his bedding, and he lay there helpless throughout the battle for the ship. I... Oh, the worst part. Bush is his... His hand dog look this morning. I... Poor old Buckland. Oh, captured asleep in bed. I, I suppose you'll never live that down. Will there be a court of inquiry, do you imagine? Oh, there's bound to be. You see, Bush, you, you are lucky to be ill. Whatever happens, it's going to be embarrassing. Hornblower, how the devil did those prisoners escape? Come in. Oh, that's you, sir. Nice of you to stop in and see Mr. Bush. Good afternoon, Captain. Good afternoon, Mr. Bush. Thought I'd just look in on you for a moment before... Going ashore? You, uh, you're going ashore to make your report, sir? Yes. Well, it's, it's a beautiful afternoon, sir, sir, so far as I can judge. And, and you do look most impressive, sir. Those spotless white trousers and uniform coat and your sword. I, 
I... Oh, yes, I've dressed with the utmost care in the finest I could find. I've carefully prepared my reports. And I wish to heaven I were dead. Oh, sir, I... Oh, don't say that, sir. I wish I were. Your gig's alongside, sir, and three prizes are just anchoring astern of us. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I shall be up in a moment. Aye, aye, sir. Yes, remember the Spanish prizes, Captain. Uh, they'll bulk very large to the gold grey at the shore. Oh, well, I... How in heaven's name did those Spanish maniacs escape? Well, it must surely have been due to the, uh, well, carelessness of the Marine Guard, sir. Certainly it was well planned. Perhaps none of the women, well, quite sold themselves in exchange for a portrayal, but their seeming complacency must have led some of our men to leave a hatchway unfastened. Yes, I... We must institute an investigation at once. Yes, Sergeant Billings has already reported, sir. He seems quite certain, after much inquiry, that two Marines were responsible. And both of them died in the fighting last night. Oh, well, uh, at any rate, I want you gentlemen to know uh, I've treated you well in these reports. For instance, Mr. Hornblower, I've uh, given you full credit for what you did at Haiti and for boarding the ship when the prisoners rose. Oh, thank you, sir. It's uh, more than I deserve. Well, I'll be off. Good fortune to you, Mr. Bush, if you've been taken ashore before I'm back. Oh, thank you, sir. And good luck to you, too, sir. Well, ashore. A man on his way to the gallows might look rather like that, don't you think, Bush? Yes. Well... Get some sleep now, if you can, sir. I'll attend to my other duties, and then we'll see that you get ashore. After we'd piped Captain Buckland off, there was much else to be seen to while we waited for the stretcher bearers from Kingston. Meanwhile, up on deck, I asked Surgeon Clive about Bush. Hmm, yes, Mr. Hornbroad, his condition is rather serious. Serious? Well, you didn't tell me that this morning. He's grown feverish, and with so many wounds, both large and small, I fear infection. Oh. Oh, well, he's not in such bad shape as those three seamen who stood with him. Don't worry. They have a really excellent naval hospital here, I'm informed. Ah, I do believe that's the hospital lighter now. Am I mistaken? I think you're not mistaken, Doctor. Dawson, stand by to receive those stretcher men from the boat coming alongside. There should be stretchers for six men in all. Be lively now. Uh, here we are, Mr. Bush. Sun's a bit blinding, isn't it? Hmm. Hornblower, I, I knew there was something I had to ask you. What's that? Kept coming back to, to bother me all morning. Hmm? When you recaptured the Renan last night, you came all the way from the Garitana. Well, yes, naturally. Yes, but how did you know that anything was wrong? You were, you were so far away. Oh, I heard a couple of musket shots at first, and then I saw the Renan come up into the wind, and that seemed aimless and peculiar. So you collected all three prize crews together, was that it? Yes. Well, the thing that puzzles me, stripping all three of our seamen, weren't you afraid of losing the prizes on blur then? They all carried prisoners aboard. Better to lose the prizes than the Renan Bush. Besides... Besides what? Well, I had every sheet and halyard cut in the prizes before we left them. It took them so much time to read new ones that we had no trouble at all retaking them. Oh, so that was it. And you had to retake them? Yeah. By the holy, you had a busy night all in all. Well, yes, rather. Into the boat with them now, men. And watch those slings. Hoist away. <coughs> Goodbye, Hornblower. Good luck and carry on. Goodbye, Bush. We will be waiting for you here in the Renown. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.